So good evening once again uh, on the webinar uh, entitled Integrating Nature-Based Solutions in Education in a Twinning as well. Um, just a brief introduction what the webinar will look like. Uh, we will first, uh, I will first try to explain uh, what nature-based solutions are, show you some examples. And then Gabriela will talk about uh, her scenario and her idea of integrating this uh, idea, this nature-based solutions into education. And then I will move on to talk about my own, which will be totally different. So um, first, when you look at the two photos, well, you can see the same place. In fact, this is Seoul in Korea. And uh, the picture above shows you a street or two streets, in fact, very broad. Um, and under the, the one, the street uh, on the right, there is a river. But the river is so dirty or was, because that's the past. The river was so dirty, so ugly that uh, um, the city council decided to cover it with a street. And a few years later, there was a wise man ruling the city who decided that there has to be something done with this uh, river uh, and they devoted uh, a lot of time and a lot of money to clean the river uh, and to make it uh, uh, to renew the, the ecosystem uh, so that in fact as you can see in the picture in the bottom picture uh, it became the center of the whole city in fact uh, this is the favorite place of uh, the citizens uh, and of the tourists and the money that uh, the city invested into renewing the, uh, the ecosystem, in fact, uh, uh, has paid back because uh, the, there are so many tourists coming to that place that uh, uh, they are leaving their money there. And this is, uh, this is an example of nature-based uh, solution that is uh, the most popular, in fact, this is always given as an example. Um, so, what the nature-based solutions really are? Uh, so solutions, right? So, the, the, they are solutions to some uh, problems, but solutions that use nature in order to solve some social, uh, social problems, ecological problems, or even economic problems, as you could see in the example in, from uh, Seoul. The examples of um, nature-based solutions are, for example, a green roof, such as the one you can see in the photo here. This is a picture from Poland, from Białystok, and uh, one of the universities uh, has got some beautiful green roof with uh, beehives uh, on, uh, on it. Uh, so I will not tell you exactly now what the uh, benefits of this uh, this uh, uh, solutions are because we will move on later on to that. But this is just one of the examples. Another one are restored ecosystems like the one in the river in uh, in Seoul. Another is a social garden. Social meaning a, a garden in the city, usually on uh, an area belonging to the city council, and uh, people. The area is given to people so that they could. Uh, uh, plant, uh, grow some vegetables or fruit there. Uh, they can meet there. They can um, spend their free time. They learn. Uh, another idea is uh, water management, uh, like, for example, water reservoirs. And not only, in fact, there are some more. A rain garden, uh, which can be very uh, small, just for one um, uh, one uh, pipe, a rain, uh, rain pipe. Am I correct, Gabriela? Rain pipe? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, or it can be very big, like sometimes in the, in the center of cities, there is a whole system of rain gardens where um, water, after a strong uh, downpour, for example, goes uh, not to the streets or not to the uh, system uh, that is under the streets, for example, under the concrete, but it goes to the rain gardens. It can be a vertical garden, so a wall covered with some plants or some other ideas. Um, these are not just to look good, right? They are solutions that make some, that have some positive benefits for people uh, who live nearby. For example, they can be, um, they can um, uh, provide um, a barrier uh, between a very busy and noisy street and behind a vertical garden, there is a 
um, place where citizens can rest. Or it can be like uh, uh, insulation, like the green roof. It protects from heat in the uh, summer and uh, from the uh, frost in the winter, right? It collects water from the rain. Many, many other benefits that we'll, we'll talk about later on. Why we think that NBS, that's the short version of nature-based solutions, why uh, we think that this is a perfect subject for school and for twinning? Because this is an essential part of ecological education. We all know that ecological education is more and more important. We have to pay a lot of attention to, to that. And uh, uh, recycling and, uh, and uh, rubbish is, is not just enough. Or, or um, when we teach our students to um, switch off the light when they leave the room, that's not enough, right? We have to do more. And MBS is a good uh, idea to do that it develops many skills and competences because it is never a lesson in which a teacher talks and students listen. It is always a lesson uh, in which students do something, depending on the scenario. Uh, NBS uses modern teaching methods. We will show you some today. Uh, it allows students to make a change in their closest area and they can feel the change. So they make a change and they also benefit from it, right? They know, they can feel they have done something positive. Students can learn to be active citizens because if they have influence uh, on what is happening around them, they grow up knowing that they should have the influence. They can they can have the influence and they should use that. Uh, what is more, students become sensitive to nature. If nature is not only beautiful, but it also helps them to solve some problems. And it reaches not only students, but also their families because, because it reaches the whole surrounding area, the whole uh, society uh, that is around school or around the, the the group that is working on NBS. So this is uh, the introduction, uh, short introduction, and I will let Gabriela uh, talk about her part, and I will come back to you and introduce myself uh, later on. Oh, thank you, Eva. It was very really lovely. So I hope everyone got the main idea of what NBS really is and how really small change or a really small help of us, all of us, can produce such a great changes in our environment and also how to bring such piece of education also to students in our classes. So at the beginning, I would like to tell you a little bit about me. So maybe some of you have already heard about me, but maybe some not. So I am an ordinary teacher of ICT and English in Slovakia. I teach my students from the age of 10 up to 15. So, and I try to implement new technologies and also new ideas into my learning scenarios and into my learning, and actually um, educating my students with something what is new always and what is always provided by the European Union. And also I serve as an Etwining ambassador for my country and for my region, where we actually run some projects, e-twinning projects, and also we educate teachers how to run such e-twinning projects and what good ideas to implement into such easy e-twinning projects through uh, those resources. We can also just bring more, more of Europe to our classes. And for today, I just uh, decided, or decided, actually, uh, me and Eva, we worked really hard previous years on preparing a learning scenario for our teachers to be used in classes. And also, there are really good chances of such learning scenario to be used in a training project. So my learning scenario is Greta. As you can see, it's the abbreviation for Green Relevant Environment to All. And um, actually, it's uh, something new because it combines everything about STEM education or STEM education and also CLIL education. I hope uh, you, you who uh, actually teach teaches English are familiar with CLIL method uh, when students are educated through certain um, topics about how to use grammar, how to use vocabulary or just subject connected vocabulary that is really useful because students don't learn everything isolately. They learn something in a big package. And so they learn about how to use all those things and also vocabulary for that reasons. 
So to tell you something more, uh, oops, I don't want to jump so fast. Sorry, I apologize. So, uh, okay, there is the learning scenario as I can, as you can see. So it was um, can be easily used in a twinning project. I started with such a twinning project the previous year, but we got locked down. But it was just project between m me and my colleague because we were uh, just to get students still work um, online. We worked in a twinning platform and it was school project. Uh, but from my point of view and actually from my practice, I always think that uh, students will be more interested in the project or attracted by the project if there is a famous person or influencer. And in this each winning project, it's good if you just take, in this case, it was Greta Thunberg. I think she, she is well familiar character and people just, some people love her and some people are just hate her. And um, actually, if you want to evoke students' interest, it's really good if you start with something like that, your e-twinning project. And uh, the main idea of my scenario was to use her video, Nature Now, in which she just stated her uh, initial things about how to behave to nature and to just take action. It was a kind of um, not violent way how to address students or her uh, um, or students at her age, how to start and be more proactive and to start uh, act to save nature and environment. And in this learning scenario, I actually wanted to student learn about environmental destructions and uh, just approach them to critical thinking methods to let them or give them space to start critical thinking and to say their opinions about the topic from their point. So also to find some environmental solutions and let them work independently and do self-studying because it's also very important nowadays we can see that if students are locked down and they stay at home, so it's not only what you deliver through online lessons, you also give them some material to study on their own and it really brings new um, new approaches for students. And also it was um, such, let's say, added value was for them understanding the necessity of taking action. To start from the, as I say, to start local, but go global from that point uh, of this preparation. Uh, so as I said, said uh, previously, so STEM, I think it, you are familiar because you are all e-tweeners, so you know that STEM is also very interesting uh, direction in education when students learn something of, about the new technologies, learn about new um, mathematics approaches and also in one package. And also I used CLIL method because I wanted my students to learn about really meaningful topics and I wanted to evoke them to speak and listen, uh, to develop their listening and speaking skills based on the topic they have and to start speak freely about those topics. Also, it's a really good, um, this idea of such scenario is that students really use subject specific vocabulary. Maybe if they work with ordinary book, they don't get such a huge vocabulary with new words and up to date words because you know, the vocabulary also changes um, in the independence on what we study. And also sometimes it's good if students, of course, it's good if they uh, just produce correct sentence structures and they know what to use and how to express their thoughts. And also at least, but not last, actually last but not least, it's awareness of having an attitude. Uh, you know that sometimes students show that they are not interested, that they are just not motivated, they are just bored. And it's good if you just uh, let them to have an attitude at least, to express what they really thought, think about such things. Uh, so why Greta and her campaign? Because I have found that Greta uh, is almost the same age as they. So um, she is very uh, close to them and they uh, pattern of thinking and I wanted them to encourage, I wanted them to help her in her climate campaign and to fight against climate changes to show them that Greta 
uh, is just ordinary student and she just took action and she well, she started to show what she thinks about what's going on around her uh, dealing with environmental problems and also teaching about ecology as Eva said we have to start from the primary education that there is to learn about ecology about ecology disasters about ecology solutions how to start from the very early age to teach students that it really matter what we do and how we behave to nature and to get not only benefits from the nature and we also give back nature what we get and also i wanted my students to teach them how to protest in non-violent ways not to go on strikes or something like that just spread through their media media can, uh, channels and through their media networks uh, that really they took part in such campaign and as you can see in these um, in this uh, slide so actually i asked my students to prepare such posters uh, which will represent their thoughts and their ideas about the campaign but I don't, didn't want them only to produce a poster, but I wanted them to go a bit deep into the topic and try to find such solutions that have already been done around Europe, around the world, that really, with very small help of us people, the nature was able to recover and to become really independent. As you can see, this is not good scene, but I will just share the presentation later. As you can see in each of these posters, there is also a picture of Greta Thunberg as the influencer. And also they just show the study they found on the internet, what has been done in the area uh, they prefer and how, the, how it was uh, done in that country. And also there is the link to for those who are interested to look more in the topic and also it was for you for um, it winners and if you want to start it winning project it's always really good if you want to start and you work your students to work in international teams why in international teams because it really shows that students have to work with the language and they have to just work as you know digitally to work online together and I have chosen this critical thinking approach, as you can see, of, think, uh, of six thinking heads, because it's really old method, but it has been proved that it's really good and still, still has something to help our students to just adapt different color or different position or role in this discussion. So this... Um, this approach is really easy because you have to just divide students or actually students are divided uh, in six different uh, categories actually and each student represents different color as you can see there are all those six colors and each color represents different attitude so as you can see the first one the white so we have to gather it before we start this discussion all the data, facts or other insights or actually students have to run a little research on the numbers and things. For example, I just uh, started my scenario with the video to watch uh, and in the video they have to found or have, have to had to found all the data and all the facts about what is going on in our ecology. So another group and other students have to represent the yellow color so yellow color is always cheerful and so they have to just state what in such campaign if we want to support Greta in her actions might be really positive and what uh, really can go well so we have to find the really strong points of our campaign uh, then there is the black color as you can see from my material it's something that um, you might be just threatened by or you can feel some weakness points in doing such campaign for for example so we will be um, refused to go we will be just stuck somewhere no move and so things so about that and also we uh what um, green color represent opportunities or recommendations something what might get uh, into the project or into the campaign really good 
uh, red color definitely it's something about your mm, let's say gut fe good good feelings about what you feel or your emotions and such such uh, give it second thought how to run it or how to do this campaign and back we are to red uh, actually to blue head and um, it's something like uh, to just reflect everything what we have done in discussion and just uh, write down all those things uh, with my students I was doing everything online and as you can see in another slide so they were presented with different color as you can see they are wearing different t-shirts the color of the t-shirts and they run the discussion on the same basis as we did and also if you want to do something like that it's really good for you if you uh, just let students to take a really big piece of paper and let them do all the colorful thoughts to write down or also uh, because we usually in Infinity projects we work online so it's really good if you start or if you just share I can show you something uh, an example of what might be uh, done with your student uh, students as you can see here we have the Padlet and in the Padlet as you can see the topic was really easy and you can also do it in your project or in environmental project something should we organize a planting even at school really easy but a really good topic for students not to only get theoretical thoughts but also to do something practical and before we start it so as you can see students were divided into different colors and they had to write different points or different thoughts about what to do for example white had represented that um, do we have do we have shovels to start digging the hole in the ground for example red was something about if organizing planting even it's very cold for sustainability reasons uh, cool and so this kind of really interesting thoughts that people can just think of for example black one as you know it represents negative points so will we buy trees how to plant trees where will we get money it will might be very costly and things like that in positive points in yellow color so actually children might feel really useful to start their own garden with such lovely trees in it so every tree will remind them of these action or these activity they participated or maybe green hat as you can see um, maybe to think a bit more out of border so definitely it might be extended uh, to the for all schools in the area so let's run it national so all schools in my country might be uh, might be um, be in the project if it is a twinning project why not other schools may join you and also blue hat as you can see the last one is for events which uh, uh, definitely more practical things when to start how much time to spend on it and so such work distribution everyone is taking or is going to be responsible for such part of our common work in it uh, so I'm going back to continue in my presentation okay just it takes a little bit uh, time but never mind uh, okay so I just uh, want the document all right and uh, back to the very very easy point as you can see what is really interesting for you uh, there we have uh, as I said uh, previously so we worked with Eva in um, nature based solution pilot project and all of us 15 students elaborated really lovely learning scenarios and all those scenarios are in scientific repository where you can find them and you can just easily go through it and find it I will later show it to you because I don't want to skip from this presentation to uh, what is there and I will show you all those 15 scenarios all together and what is really good point for everyone you can't complain that you don't understand English language or there are some difficulties to understand 
uh, that language for your students because all the learning scenarios, 15 of them, have been translated into 15 learning scenarios. And yes, of course, I will give you, we will give you the link very soon. Uh, okay, so what else? Uh, back to my learning scenario, I told you that at the beginning of my presentation that um, Greta Thunberg is a bit controversial a person. Some people like her, some people don't like her. And so at the beginning, I started my learning scenario for my students to think a little bit and to state their opinions about the topic. So as you can see, I just uh, how to engine my students to start debate, encouragement. So there were a few questions to answer. So is Greta Thunberg an influencer of your generation, for example? Uh, would you be interested or would it be interesting for you to help her in her campaign? Uh, so something like that should be the initial step in your project if you start a training project because at least you get students uh, interested into the topic and you evoke their awareness of the topic you want to run the e-twinning project about. And as you can see, this was the first uh, just link to easy uh, Google document, shared document as a form, formulate to start and to ask students to answer. And also, I wanted my students to work uh, also with the language. So clear method was really essential for me because I can't just do a run project and get it away from my teaching plans. So as you can see, there was the video and still there is a video in YouTube that you can easily find and it's nature now. And Greta Thunberg is just giving her speech there about what's going on. And I wanted my students to work with the text as well and to watch the video and to understand and later uh, just get them to elaborate one, wor uh, one um, worksheet about the topic that uh, everything what they watched in the video. So as you can see, there is the link. I have to switch right now into it. So it might be sometimes really difficult to show you what is actually everywhere and just share it. All right, so this was the Padlet I wanted to show you. And later, as you can see, these is the resources in Scientix repository uh, where you can find every learning scenario. And every learning scenario, as you can see, there is a real description of the learning scenario. And also the age group of students it is appropriate for. And also the name of the project it was elaborated. And also, as you go down, you can see a really short characteristic of the project. What is the main topic of the project and why to use this learning scenario in the classroom. And also, as you can see, all that languages that uh, the scenario has been translated to. For example, because you are um, Polish, most we are just running in Slovak and Polish version. So you can easily download it if you click on the link. And if you open it, it's easy Word document. And you can just see everything what, what, what has been uh, set for those four lessons. As you can see, something to prepare, uh, some resources actually, how many hours I'm going to spend or you can spend. Uh, it's only... Uh, estimated time you can uh, spend uh, on my learning scenario. Sometimes you need more lessons. Maybe you can you would like to add something or maybe you can just have one lesson uh, if you think that it uh, will be enough. I hope I'm sharing this document because I'm sharing my screen. And other things what you can see there, actually, it's all the things about the learning scenario, just theoretical things, but there is. As you can see, every lesson is divided based on the topic or what to do, actually. This first one was about uh, the questionnaire. It was only five minutes. It was really short introduction to the topic. I let my students just do a bit brainstorming about. Later, we watched the video. It's the activity took about 15 minutes. 
So really easily, I'm not going through every step of it, but actually the video and also to work on such activities or exercises. And this is really interesting because I wanted my students to just do research and find more about nature-based solutions. And there are two really great links where you can go with your students and just uh, look what has already been done. And as I told you, this was the easy, uh, easy questionnaire for my students or a quiz for my students to start the debate and to evoke the awareness of the problem. So something like what sentences characterize uh, Greta Thunberg and to, to state their attitude uh, about the campaign we started at the beginning. So it's really easy. Uh, now, as you can see, there is the whole video that Greta Thunberg, uh, Greta Thunberg just um, elaborated. And also for my students, it was really interesting. I always, when I teach my students, I want them also to see the text. So I always skip to subtitles for them to see, as you can see. And based on the, based on this uh, scenario, uh, there is also a working or say there is the worksheet. Uh, I'm not sure if you are familiar with this one, but actually I will send it to your link soon or the chat box based on the video they watch and uh, there is a script of all what she said and what was presented in the video so students effectively learn vocabulary or subject uh, vocabulary and actually later they have some uh, tasks to complete as you can see in this first part was something about vocabulary to connect such words with the definitions. So it's easy and it's, for example, you, they can write here what was said there on actually dealing with the video. Also another one, uh, easy exercise, how to put the sentences, how they appeared in the video. So just train their, um, their memories and to work, uh, let them work with the text effectively. And maybe the sentence formation, as I said, so as you can see, they have some words and they have to just put the words into the order uh, how they appeared in the video or just form the sentences and everything is as you can see they can finish and they can see the score it's really good if you work online so definitely these worksheets or like worksheets are really useful for us for teachers to work with such topics and also let students to have such self-reflection at the end and to see if they did in the best way they should. Uh, okay, so I think this was mostly about the project uh, itself. I'm going to switch again to presentation because now uh, Eva is going to have her part and tell us more about her learning scenario. Uh, only one thing I would like to, str to emphasize in the presentation, you will also find uh, the link to the whole. Okay, where am I? Stop sharing. Sorry. Okay, so there is the document to share. Uh, I also am able to send you the link to my GMAC where you can find everything from the scenario up to all the outputs of the. A really nice campaign I did with my students. Uh, so if you have any questions now, I'm going to be in chat box and I can answer your questions and just send you some links. While Eva is going to take her part right now and she is going to tell us more about her um, scenario. And I'm really glad because we can work or cooperate together. Uh, my scenario was set for primary school students, the second grade actually. And Eva works with students who are younger. And as I said, from the very early age, students have to learn about such topics. You go. Thank you very much, Gabriela. So uh, now I can introduce uh, very shortly myself. Uh, so my name is Eva przybysz although here I'm a moderator on the, on the chat. Uh, I am a primary school uh, subjects teacher, uh, but I also teach English uh, in primary school. Uh, I am also ambassador of a twinning program. Uh, I belong to, to some other uh, teacher groups. I 
uh, write a blog for teachers. So I invite you, uh, well, Polish teachers, uh, because it's in Polish, uh, it's uh, And I'm really passionate about uh, nature-based solutions since uh, with Gabriela, I started my my adventure with that, uh, oh, well, almost three years ago, right? It was uh, uh, at the beginning of uh, 2020, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, it's a long time already. And uh, we were both among the 15 uh, teachers uh, from different uh, parts of Europe chosen to be uh, to take part in this NBS pilot project uh, in which we learned about it and we wrote our scenarios and we are still working on it, uh, promoting the, the idea among other teachers. Uh, okay, so my learning scenario is, as Gabriela said, uh, for younger students, because it is for kindergarten and uh, for um, uh, the first grades of primary school, because it is based on photos. So it doesn't have to, students who will take part in lesson um, run on this learn based on this learning scenario, do not have to read, right? It is based on photos mainly. Uh, and I really did this scenario with uh, six-year-old uh, students, so um, it was great for them, it, just accurate for this age. Uh, so <clears throat> students will develop the skill, skills such as teamwork, because they will work in teams all the time here. They will develop critical thinking, searching for information from various sources that is for all a bit older students, those who can read, right, mostly. Uh, or they can search for information with me, with the teacher um, who is uh, running the lesson. So my learning scenario uh, is, uh, I, I will not show it, maybe Gabriela has already shown it, so it is also on the page that we will share the link with you later on. Uh, it is also in uh, 12, I guess, different languages, so you can download it in your own language and you can have a look at it. Um, Okay, something more about it. The methodology that is in this uh, learning scenario. So the students acquire knowledge by analyzing photos. So it is not the teacher who tells them what nature-based solutions are, but the teacher gives them a lot of photos um, which are included in the scenario. So you don't have to look for them on your own. You have the, um, the repository of photos that you can use. Uh, there are photos of uh, green cities, uh, cities uh, or some places in cities which use nature-based solutions, but also of some uh, cities that are really concrete, uh, they, that are um, dirty uh, and some places that we wouldn't rather like to live in. Uh, and uh, the students looking at those photos are supposed to divide them into groups the places they would like to live in and those that they wouldn't like to live in. By the way, there is uh, also a link to um, a genial presentation, uh, which can be used during remote teaching. And I really did this the first uh, time that I did this learning scenario was during remote teaching. So it was online with my students. So this is why it was all in a presentation. So the students uh, divide all the photos into two groups. Uh, obviously, they will definitely choose the, the ones with uh, nature. I'm 100% sure of that. Uh, and then we uh, just get rid of the other ones and we talk about, we focus on those photos and we try to um, and develop the definition why they would like to live in, what is so special about those uh, cities that uh, they, they look um, appealing to, to live in. Um, and... Uh, leading the students, uh, the teacher just uh, um, just uh, is a their partner is the moderator of the uh, of the discussion. And uh, um, the students step by step come to develop the definition of NBS by themselves, right? So this is already uh, the, the active way that I have talked about uh, at the beginning, right? NBS is not just the teacher giving a lecture, it is students working. So when we already have developed the definition of NBS or basing on the, the ideas on the on the on the examples on the photos. The students try to understand the relations between various elements of their surroundings, right? So 
what what benefits or what are the relations between nature in the photos between nature and, uh, and other places uh, maybe uh, buildings or people living there in the places that are in the photos and then we move on to look at our own surrounding so we take our students for a walk around the school area or maybe if that's possible around the district uh, and we try to find similar places in our area and think, analyze why uh, or what is the function of nature in this given place. And this way, the students develop their understanding, their deep understanding of MBS, of course, on the level of six or seven year olds, right? Uh, and um, later on, even during the, the walk, uh, students try to find a place. Uh, which might be improved with nature. So where we could implement a nature-based solution. And now they already know different types of nature-based solutions because different types of them are presented in the photos. They can think of what could be done in this given place. Uh, they might search for more information to, uh, to find out what is possible to be done in this uh, place. They, uh, may, they, they can choose several places, right? And in the classroom during research, they can choose one and they design a solution. And since they are very uh, young uh, students, they just, they usually just draw it. Um, they are, they are practicing their creativity here. Um, we may see if they really understood the, the subject of MBS. Uh, and I will skip just two slides to show you um, some ideas of my students, because we were um, working on our school area and uh, this, sorry, okay, well, you can see that. Uh, this black uh, thing on the right uh, hand photo is uh, the shape of our school as seen from, uh, from above, so like on Google Maps. And uh, all the rest is just the area around school. And the students were asked to design solutions with nature that might be um, good for them, for their families and for the society that lives around school. So uh, many students notice that there is no water and they want water because uh, I have some students who like fishing. So their dream was to make a small water reservoir that would store uh, rainwater, but also be a nice uh, place to spend free time uh, at, right? Uh, they also designed uh, like green um, maze with uh, with uh, some plants, right? Uh, they also designed um, simple things like benches. There are no benches in our school around our school. They are inside, but not in the garden. They noticed that, and they saw that even if there are some trees, there is some nature around our school. There are no benches, and they can have no place to sit. Uh, to um, take advantage of this nature. So very simple uh, drawings done in groups, but uh, they show that uh, there is a lot to be done in our school. Just moving back a, a bit, um, the closest surrounding, this is the, the main, um, uh, as if the main slogan in uh, in NBS, because uh, it is always student. It is always that students uh, plan or design a nature-based solution for their closest surrounding. Why? Because it makes them feel responsible for what happens around them. Uh, they can make a change because um, it was during remote teaching, and we only we stopped on drawings. Right? We didn't implement our um, solutions, but uh, now we are working on a solution that we want to implement in reality. If they do that, they will see that they have something to say. They can make a change and they feel motivated because uh, this, it is their change, right? Their idea, their design. Uh, they can become active citizens. If, if they act in uh, their local surrounding, uh, they can also be active uh, citizens of the whole country, right? They, they will take part in elections. Uh, they will... Um, make some uh, decisions um, they will they will have a say they will say their opinion this is what we want our students to become and uh, they will 
build a strong bond with nature because doing something in their closest surrounding is always something for them, right? They take the benefit from uh, from it. Uh, all right, I will now, uh, yeah, we do have time. Uh, I will show you, I will invite you to do a short, very short uh, task. So I'm just pasting the link in the chat. This is a word will exercise in which you can see some examples of uh, NBS solutions, some NBS. Maybe I will share it to show you how it works. Okay. This is it. So I hope you are already doing it. Uh, we have just six types of uh, solutions, nature-based solutions. We have a green roof, a meadow. Meadows are very popular nowadays. A vertical garden, a pocket park. So a park, a uh, very small park just uh, inside, for example, um, an area uh, where there are lots of blocks of flats, right? And there is some very small space between them and it is um, planted with trees or with some other plants. A rain garden and a social garden. And your task is just to put those pictures in the proper places. I hope you're doing that now. In the meantime, I will just... Uh, yeah, I, I think I don't need to show you that you are doing it by your own, on your own. I will move back to the presentation then. Okay. Somebody's writing in the chat. Good. Yeah, done. Really nice. Okay. Uh, it is in English because it's it's for um for this webinar, right? But I also have such. Uh, um such uh, games for my students uh, in polish because uh, it takes just uh, two minutes to prepare and it really is attractive to them and it lets them understand uh, oh lets them understand what it is and it lets me see how they understood it good six per six great all right so ah uh, something's wrong with my mouse sorry okay um there are lots of um, resources on the internet about NBS. They are usually in English because it is still more popular in England, in English, uh, around the world, uh, and uh, it becomes more popular in Poland as rozwiązanie uh, oparte na przyrodzie. But uh, the three, um, the three repositories of case studies that you can see here in this uh, uh, in this uh, slide uh, are very helpful uh, because they have interactive maps on which there are um, marked places where nature-based solutions have already been applied. So you can just click on a map in one of the places. I will show you that would be better. Click on the map, choose a place, and uh, read about the solution. Okay, this is one of them. This is Opla. Uh, there are three um as you can see this is about uh, the whole world so some of them some of the atlases are some of the repositories are just about europe and you can choose a place europe is very full of nbs's well let's see united kingdom i'm not seeing anyone from from there on the webinar so united K kingdom you can see several places in scotland so let's see about Aberdeen. This is Middlefield Green Space. So you can just click more and read about it. You can see what type of solution was implemented, uh, what are the benefits, uh, what was the cost and such things. So depending on the repository you choose, there are different types of information, but this is very uh, nice um, for a bit older students, maybe for six, seven year olds, not necessarily, but nine, ten and older. Uh, it is a very good idea to just give them a link and uh, let them explore the atlas, the, the repository, um, just to look for what can be done, look at what can be done uh, in some places, and just to, to show them that there are so many places where nature-based solutions were already implemented, and not all of them are marked, 
right? Because the map shows only those that uh, that were um, somehow um, I don't know how to say it that somebody uh, let the the opla know that there is this place, right? And there are lots more that haven't been mm, registered in any other places. All right. Sorry, but it takes a bit of time to skip from one, uh, from sharing a screen to, to sharing the presentation. So uh, the um, the resources, uh, yeah, I, I think I can I can I will give you the uh, the links later on when Gabriela will uh, talk because she, Gabriela will finish uh, the presentation. And one more thing that I would like you to uh, I would like to show you is a game. Uh, this one I will uh, share with you in the chat because this is a game that is in English, uh, but it's very um, good uh, to uh, just to, to play the game. It's um, it is about a city, uh, invented city. It's not a any uh, city existing in reality in the world. Uh, it is a city uh, with some problems, and you just move from one problem to another, uh, the problem is described and you have to choose from the possible solutions, two or three, depending on the problem. And uh, it will also let you and your students, if you show it to your students, it will let you um, understand uh, what nature-based solutions uh, really are, because it may seem easy, but it uh, really requires uh, um, a, a bit of work to understand it uh, properly. Okay, so I uh, I will just uh, let uh, Gabriela finish uh, the webinar, and if you have any questions, just please write them on the chat. I will try to answer all of them. Okay, thank you very much for letting me be back again. So as Eva said, it's really a lovely game to play, and I hope you can see how it works. So definitely, you have five different parts and you have to just decide what to do in each situation so there are some possibilities and it will gives you also some uh, will give you also some really lovely things and how to solve uh, with the reflection at the end if you are a good mayor or not such a good and also you will see some examples how everything be, has been done in different parts based on such problems the country or the town actually were faced to. So as you can see, there are five of them. So it's something about air quality. So how to improve the air quality in your in the, in the hypothetical town or the imaginary town. Something about climate resilience and also green space management. It's really very up to date topic in most cities uh, which suffer of the lack of really green places. Something, some some places really which are close to coast actually have can have some problems with coastal resilience and also water management is really something what is always a big demand in big cities how to save water how to use water and all those things about and it's a really good game because students learn also English as well and practice English actually. Uh, they practice understanding of English text actually and also they decide what is really good or what is not good, how to deal with the situation. And also uh, at, the, at the end they can see real examples of what have been done to avoid such bad air, con air quality or how to start with um, coastal resilience. It's all for your students, but I think we teachers are always teachers and we always study something and there, there is really good uh, European Academy platform, as you can see in this slide. So there are lots of MOOCs, so it's massive online open courses for us teachers to go to the study, to use free materials there, to complete some tasks and also get certificate that you might use later or if not certificate or if not something what you do there so always you can find really good resources for your students to just deal with and because i know that me and eva we started everything about nbs so it's really good if you as 
uh, teachers can go and to see I will show you the whole platform uh, how to find all the courses and some of the courses were really really very successful and there are rerun of the courses again so just feel free as you can see there is the platform so it's European schoolnet academy dot EU and you have all the courses there I have to go up so this is how it looks it's European school Not Academy you have the course catalog and for now as you can see those two are in progress so they started on the 25th of October and it integrated STEM teaching for secondary and for primary schools and also what is really good are uh, the outputs of those those mm, courses are learning scenarios that you can use in your teaching practice because you also are an evaluator of other learning scenarios posted by your peers you have to give the feedback and also your learning scenario is evaluated by somebody else so actually in that case uh, you can okay okay mm. so it, it's just sending something to me and I am not such multifunctional okay I will I will work what you need I will do what you really uh, ask me to do okay uh, no okay I have to go back I hope you see the can you see it all the courses there uh, because I switched okay can you see it you? Yes, it's correct. okay fine yes. so uh, those are still open and also what is the really be a really great feature of this European School Net Academy is that the, all the courses that have already finished are still there so you can easily get in touch what was uh, the context of the uh, of the course and as you can see you have to scroll a little bit down and you can see still exploring nature-based solution in your classroom is there so you can easily go and see what is the material what was the old material about and who were the creator I uh, okay so you, you can enroll actually but it was open oh, sorry it's still there mm. you can also see the videos there and about the courses learning objectives and things other things here okay so I think it was the very last topic or the thing to present in this webinar we are perfectly on time so you are welcome all the time to ask us any questions if the questions come to your mind about such things as nature-based solution uh, we are not experts so I, I can't consider myself to be an expert on this topic but actually I tried my best and sometimes it's really really good if the community of students help each other and just try to do our best with such easy topic like environmental and nature-based solution are and as you said so thank you for my point mm -hmm. and as you said Gabriela at the beginning uh, we focused on uh, the learning scenarios and the lessons but in fact it is just a, one of the best topics for the twinning projects right you can share uh, with some other uh, students, some other classes, share ideas of what can be done. Uh, you can, for example, exchange problems. So that our problem, the problem in our area is, and the problem in your area, and we are trying to give you advice and you are trying to give us advice, right? There are lots of different possibilities uh, using um, online uh, games, using uh, modern technology. Uh, so winning projects are really uh, just ideal for that okay so that I think that's all for to, for now so if you have any questions so you can easily contact us on a twinning platform we are all ambassadors of it winning there so Eva is for Poland I'm from Slovakia so just feel free to just ask or to just get connected with us all the time